Hello, good evening and welcome. It's Friday, it's eight o'clock and that's time for Buster's Virtual Jazz Club. Yes, welcome to my brand new show, my new show, Buster's Virtual Jazz Club, live streaming on YouTube all around the world, live right now for the first time. And what a show I've got for you. What a great guest. I'm very excited to have this wonderful artist on the show tonight and uh, what a way to start. He's absolutely at the top of his game in in many different genres of music. So um, we're only going to be able to give a little snapshot of um, of his output. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the wonderful, the amazing, the incredible Mr. John Etheridge. Hello, John. Hello, Buster. Great How to be here. Thank. Uh, but I don't have to play after that build up. I can just talk. <laughs> It's great, so nice to see you. Thank you so much for uh, giving your time up this evening and coming and joining us on this show. Pleasure. I'm very excited about this, as you can probably tell. It's my this is the first show, and um, and it, you know it's just a great to have this opportunity to sit and uh, chat to you about your music and uh, play some of your amazing uh, tracks. And we've got a few videos lined up as well. But first of all, how are you? How's things? Things are very good, actually. I mean, I'm uh, fine. I guess I'm. Fine with what's going on in the sense that yeah. uh, probably like everybody else, I'm doing lots of practicing and I'm enjoying that. And uh, I have done a couple of gigs Good. Um, and there are one or two coming up, but I don't think the rest of the year is going to be very busy and full of, we just canceled a tour in yeah. Germany. We had to pull that out. That was a soft machine. And because uh, yeah. we're all a bit old, Buster. You know, <laughs> no, it, nonsense. It <laughs> but um so, but yeah, apart from that, I'm fine. Walking. I spent four months in the Lake District, which was brilliant during wow. lockdown. I was oh, very I lucky. I didn't know that. That's oh, we. It's one of our favourite places. Yeah. yeah, there's a very nice jazz club there, isn't there? Well, that's where I stayed. Zeffirelli's. Zeffirelli's. That's it. Vegetarian restaurant and yeah, jazz club. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Wonderful. Fantastic. So, I mean, this is going to be. Um, like just a taste that we can, I wanted to try and show uh, some of the breadth of your work and obviously, uh, you know, give people a taste of some of the amazing things you've done. And uh, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of it. So um, if we, what we'll do is we'll start, I think with, uh, with your, with your work with Soft Machine. So um, th this is obviously, you know, jazz rock super group. Um, yeah. And uh, we've got a video uh, from an from an early early TV appearance, mm -hmm. and uh, and a recent album which you brought out a new album just this year, uh, right? Just uh, well, July. That's very very good book ending actually, because that's the the soft machine clip you're going to see was the first time I was ever on television. Fantastic. So despite the fact that I look completely cool, I was absolutely uh, uh, totally nervous. And and the second track is the last. Re most recent Soft Machine album, which was recorded live in um, Los Angeles. Los Angeles, right? yes. Yeah. And it's um, so it's a great bookend because it's almost the first thing and the last thing. Well, I'm doing my uh, best here. Yeah. <laughs> so without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, we'll just uh, look at this track. So this is from 1976. Does that sound about right? It, and uh, with the Soft Machine. Uh, live, was this a live TV show or was this a show? Yeah, live TV. Uh, yeah, it was. Well, it was no, it was a live TV show, but it wasn't broadcast live, but it was recorded live within right. a little. And Clive James was the warm up act. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so we just have to imagine that bit now. Yeah, yeah, you will. <laughs> so, and this is the tales of the tale of Tal Talisian. How do you say? Taliesin. Taliesin, who was a was a very was a bard, wasn't he? A, from the Fifth or sixth um, century or something like that, I believe. I think that's right. Yeah, poet. Yeah, he's big in Wales. He's big. <laughs> Fantastic. Here we go.
That was a cool soft machine in 1976, and uh, with the, um, the the lineup of soft machine there was um, Roy Babington, uh, John Etheridge, my guest on guitar, John Marshall on the drums, and Carl Jenkins, now Sir Carl Jenkins, as uh, John was just uh, uh, reminding me on the keyboards. So, J- John. Um, I thought what we could do is just go back a little bit before that and um, talk about how you found yourself playing with one of the you know leading uh, rock jazz rock fusion groups of the time. So, because um, uh, you 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 got quite a bit of attention very early on for some very famous guitarists, didn't you? Um, as I recall, in- uh, well, well, yeah. Basically, what happened was um, I'd been playing with a, a band called Daryl Ways. Wolf, which was Daryl Way was the violinist with Curved Air, and uh, he'd split off and formed his own band, which is called Wolf. And uh, uh, Chris Welch really liked my playing, and so I got a lot of um, big ups in the Melody Maker over the you know period 1973, 74, 72, 73, 74, and um, which was uh, great. It freaked me out a bit actually because he was a bit he was a bit uh, kind of over the top with the praise, but at the time I really made me paranoid I thought I didn't deserve it you know but anyway it was all very helpful as it turned out because uh I think um <clears throat> it kind of um people I I vaguely knew Alan Holdsworth um I'd spoken to him once or twice and I don't know if he'd heard me play but he'd probably read this stuff you know hearing people play in those days was quite difficult you had to go either to a gig yeah or you had to buy a record and and you know you didn't buy a record unless you really you know you had records were quite expensive so i don't know if he'd heard me or not but anyway i was in uh guitar top gear in denmark street sitting around and, and he was there and we had a chat and he said what are you doing and i said oh nothing much because the band had folded right and uh, i wasn't um doing very much and um he said oh right okay and he took my number and um they uh he phoned me from from America and he went, oh, hello, man, you know, did they get in touch with you? And I said, no. So then he, he I think, recontacted them because they were looking for somebody, you know, they, they were looking for, for a new guitar player when he'd gone to Tony. He went to, to play with Tony Williams. And um, That's right. of course, they, you know, they were they were I think they were thinking perhaps of going back to the saxophone, but um, they'd auditioned quite a few guys from their area. You remember, they were they were like jazz people really. Yeah. And I was in the bog rock scene. So they didn't know anything about me and they'd interviewed, um, you know, quite a lot of guys from their area who, who frankly were, were not suitable, great players, but not suitable for that particular. And they were, and there was some, the current album had the guitar on it. Is that right? Well, exactly. so that's they, just, had the guitar, is, they had the guitar on yeah. this album and they needed to promote it. And, yeah. uh, so that's, that was again, lucky for me. Otherwise I think if there'd been no album to promote, they'd have gone back to the saxophone. Right. But um, so they they were looking for people, and um, so finally, having having come to see me, I was touring with the guy. When I say I was doing nothing, that's kind of not true. I just after I saw Alan, I'd got a stint with a band called the Global Village Trucking Company, which was a kind of hippie band, and um, and, and and very very enjoyable band because it was non-stop jamming. It's like a jam band, you know. Right. Now in the twenty first century, they have jam bands. That's what this was. It was a jam band with songs and I was playing with them and um but you know I wasn't playing I was just fitting in with their vibe well you were and, playing the gig what was required for the gig and yes uh, I was playing what was required which for is the gig. what you always do amazingly well, well which is I right. think one of your great great strengths and which makes what you do all that more remarkable in the fact that you do these what completely different things you know and, and I, I do and, I, and that's interesting actually before we finish before we do the get to the soft machine that's an interesting point because I don't consciously do that but I get asked to do things where and whereas people some people might go oh I, I can't do that for instance after the soft machine while I was with the soft machine I was asked to play with Stefan Grappelli kind of out of the blue yeah and um 
I really wasn't qualified in so many ways, but I, instead of going, well, oh, I can't do that. I thought, well, come on, Stefan Grappelli, you know, play with Django Reinhardt, the great hero. I've got to give it a go. So I went the same thing, you know, when I started playing with John Williams phoned me up and I thought, I can't play with you. You're the world's greatest classical guitarist. I, how could I possibly play with you? But then I thought, I won't turn it down. I'll, you know, go along with it. And, and you just have to kind of... Um, get over your fear. I think, you, you know, people kind of perhaps shut themselves down and say, oh, my bag is bebop or something. And that's what I do. And, uh, and uh, you know, maybe they're more comfortable like that. And people are more comfortable having their own way of playing that they stick to rigidly. But I've never felt no. that. Although I would have been happy to carry on in the soft machine mode. And I would have probably, I got an offer while I was with Stefan Capelli to play with Bill Bruford. Uh, right. yeah. But I didn't do that because I was with Stefan um, and I didn't feel I could do, funny enough, now I would have done probably both and would have, but I thought, oh, well, you know, Bruford would want a commitment, so I won't go for that. Um, so I, if it hadn't been for Stefan Capelli, I would have probably carried on in the straight jazz rock mode. But, but you've, you've, uh, you've grabbed these opportunities if they've come along. But I mean, I think, I think people don't really truly appreciate how you know how what what an amazing thing that is that you do that because i can't think of anybody that else that plays those completely different styles at that level and does it at the same time now a lot of musicians yeah, go yeah. through f phases in their careers yeah. right but you've done this from very uh, from a for a very long time and I know, concurrently I and 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 been yes, exactly. doing all these gigs all together at the same time. I mean, it's it's I really know. remarkable. I wonder. I well, sorry, go on, go on. Well, I, I just want because this is to me like this is something I'm really interested in. When I've when I've all the people I have on the show and, in, and I interview, for me, it's really about the music. Like, and what do you think about when you play, and how do you approach the music? That's what I really, I really find interesting about how musicians approach music. What's the core sort of like philosophy? Like, what are they thinking when they do it? And I think this is quite revealing and it, but it I'm wondering if it's maybe like when you play so I play I've played a few different styles of things and for me mm -hmm. I you I will use a different drum kit because the sound actually makes me play differently like oh, if exactly. I play in a different style so Absolutely. with a guitar you're you're also and and again people like maybe in the audience won't realize you're playing completely different guitars yeah. when you do so, these different things and maybe is that something in your brain then that triggers when I pick this thing up I'm using this part of my brain or this or you're just you're just sort of like you know um, well, you know yeah, I, there's, yeah. there's music that you've, you've you've obviously but but it doesn't take away from the, the technique of, of playing the music and understanding that music and no, studying what it you, and, what you said about drum kits is interesting because it is like that you 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 change guitars and without you really being conscious of it yeah. it well the first thing to get over is that i'm absolutely not a session musician in other words i don't do a bit of funk a bit of rock a yeah. bit of jazz it doesn't work like that with me there's a, there's a sort of core that's me but yeah. i just find the environment yeah. pushes me in a certain direction and uh, i find for instance i was listening to a nigel kennedy album i did uh, with him um, called The Kennedy Experience, which actually is a really good album. And um, the soloing I did on, on that, it goes into all sorts of oriental, oriental, <clears throat> sort of funny scales and things. And I thought, well, I don't know why I'm doing that. I just, yeah. it just kind of happened like that. Maybe it was coming out of his brain. Right. Maybe he's sort of influencing me to play like that or something. I mean, I, 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 I do, I think I think what it means you 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 have to be very open, don't you? You have to open yourself as a person, as a musician, yeah, well, to the music yes, and play the music. You know, I certainly do. That. I mean, oh, you know. sorry, um, my finger slipped there. <laughs> oh, your finger! <laughs> I just hit a button by mistake. There was, it, was go it was going so yeah, well. There we go. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah, but yeah, sorry, because that, that's really an important thing. I think like um, this idea of being open and giving yourself to the music 
to the point where it's playing you almost, isn't it? Is that is that does that well, resonate that, at that, all? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I, almost yeah. what I'm saying. I mean, the way I play with the soft machine, well, I was really thrilled to get back on that mm. in the last 10, 12 years, is because that, the way I play with that, which, which I, I don't know where it comes from. Maybe it comes from how I remember how it was in the 70s. Maybe it's just John Marsh, the stimulus of John Marsh and Roy Babington or something. But the way I play in that, in that band um, doesn't come out in other areas. It just, it, it's just, it's not like consciously thinking it's not appropriate. No. Sometimes, sometimes I do, but often I find I'm in certain contexts and people say, oh, you were, you were underplaying there, weren't you? And I go, no, oh, not consciously. I, no, I played no. the way that what fitted fit like, like with yeah. the Global Village, which was why I was so mortified when they turned up. They turned yeah. up and, yeah. with the Global Village. and John Marshall said, well, he can't play. And Carl <laughs> James said, I think he can. And, yes. um, and yes. I went, oh, no, that's yes. ruined my chances with the soft machine. So then I phoned them up and did a proper audition and then they yeah. were fine. And then I got the yeah. gig and then from that gig I got the Stephen Grappelli gig and, and uh, you know so that was a really seminal moment getting that but um, but this thing about um, playing you see it's not if anybody listening can think well you're, you're a kind of session musician but I'm not and I hate the word um, versatile oh I hate that word <laughs> versatile is really like a session man odd job man who can do a bit of this and a bit of that it's not mm. like that or no. No. Uh, it's always got an it always feels genuine what i'm doing except you know when i do do a proper session or occasionally yeah. but nearly everything i do it feels like as you say this is my response to the environment i'm in and uh yeah uh, but i do like to you know, I'm always interested in, in, in guitar virtuosity, if you like. So that always intrigues me. So yeah. I've got plenty of time for a lot of guitarists that people don't like. I don't actually like them, but I like to hear them, you know. Well, this, sort of this is the, other, the other thing is it all boils down to lots of listening, doesn't it? And being aware of music, I would imagine, as well. I mean, yes, the, breadth, yes. the breadth of that listening right. That's and depth right. of listening as well. Anyway, sorry, yeah. I, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I think perhaps we should play a, um, a track now. So, um, because uh, the, the the problem with this show is it's too short. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so what I'm going to do now is play. Um, we're going to hear the 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 most recent track yeah. of um, uh, the most recent album from uh, Soft Machine, because yeah. I think people need to really go and look at this band if they're not familiar with it. It's 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 an absolute legend band of of the british music the british jazz rock fusion scene and it's been through many itinerations hasn't it and there's a lot of there's a lot of history in the band of different lineups oh, and plenty 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 of different lineups yeah, yeah. but this current but, lineup of you've all been you've all spent long periods of time with the band but not necessarily except for, Theo in this, except except for, for Theo. yeah roy and myself and john marshall were in it for a long time in the 70s so so yeah. we're uh, it's like the 70s band plus theo Right, and there's a and there's an ethos to this band as well because you, although you're you've kind of it's not like reformed doing all the old tracks, is it? You're still exploring new material, doing stuff as as well as playing oh. some of the, you, you know. Oh. I don't think any of you would be just sitting happy sitting there playing all the old tunes like a sort of a tribute act or anything, is it? You know. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, you see that that's a big scene on on on. on I know. We, we done some of the progressive rock things like the prog rock cruises that the yes organized yeah and a lot of bands do a sort of tribute to themselves they recreate the classic yeah. album note for note yeah. and um, of course the fans love that you know it's fair well, enough this is going to be my next question how does that because you know which version of the band do the fans know you know i suppose that's always well, a thing uh, isn't that's it? Okay. You see, when you're talking about fans i mean it's not like um you know we've we, we're viable and there are people who are really interested and, and, and we get a good reception, really. But I mean, um, b because it's something that you see, in the, it was never really that successful a band. It was sort of known, but there was too much improvisation, really, and too much jazz yeah. in the group right from the start. No, not from the start, not when Kevin Ayers was singing or Robert right. Wyatt was singing. But when they abandoned the vocals and went yeah. more or less jazz. Improvised. Improvised, improvised, yeah, improvised. with it, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, that's bound not to be uh, as 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 popular as as, uh, as say the Pink Floyd because it started with the Pink Floyd. I mean, Soft Machine and Pink Floyd were equal. 
yeah. down at the UFO club. And very similar, actually. Yeah. Because uh, Sid Barrett uh, was, you know, a trailblazer, obviously. And Kevin Ayres and, and yeah. uh, Robert and people like that were of the kind of Sid Barrett type, you know, quirky, yeah. Yeah. quirky songs and things. But, you know, Pink Floyd, despite Barrett leaving, which seemed like yeah. the end of it, yeah. carried on and, um, and, and established a song-based act, you know. Yeah. Yeah, song based. Sorry. Yeah. So there's lyrics, aren't there? There's there's words that people can. Well, there's some things you can onto. hum. I mean, I yeah. understand. You know, yeah. people would like to have things they can hum. So yeah. I do appreciate that what we're doing with the soft machine is pretty hardcore, even now. And yeah. um, but I, I really enjoy it, and I, I enjoy it. it's a selfish enjoyment because I like what I play with them. But and, I think uh, that's the fundamental root of essentially you guys are jazz musicians playing that. Um, I mean, okay, let's not put labels on it. But like, if you're if you wanted to sort of distinguish the difference between what you do and like the like the these big rock bands, like you say, you're you're approaching the music from an improvisation point of view, which I'm, yeah. I'm presuming is, is which means it's different every night. Okay, when it, and, and at any point it's you could, you you know there's yeah. a format and it can go off in a different direction. According to where you t you're responding to each other, um, uh, yes, as, as like, jazz like, musicians do. Yes, pretty much so. In fact, we do a lot of collective improvisations. Actually, most yeah. our albums have a certain pattern. Actually, quite a lot of them recently. Yeah. There's six or five or six composed songs. Then there's sort of solos and duos and trios, improvised or mainly. And then there's collective improvisations. Right. which just start from nothing and go wherever they're going to go. And, and, and people like John Marshall and Roy Babington have this in their blood, yeah. even if they don't think about it. And, yeah. and the first first incarnation with Elton Dean, Hugh Hopper, John Marshall and yeah. myself, those three guys, Elton, Hugh and John, particularly, were absolutely steeped in the, in. it's not a concept, obviously, but they're steeped in the, in free improvising which is a is a discipline of its own you know because Absolutely. you have to know when to take the baton and, and leave yeah. the bat and, and go yeah. back and there are certain great jazz musicians that i can think of i won't name yeah. who would be impossible free improvisers because they wouldn't know when to stop or yeah yeah, 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 yeah. you know yes. and it would be this it would end up as a bebop gig with them soloing and yeah. then somebody else soloing and, and that's not collective improvisation no um, it's not it's easy to get it to do it well it's not easy at all no 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 but it's, it's a participant sport i understand that it's a certain yeah. extent it's not spectator sport but we we do some some cracking improvs you know <laughs> and, and on the new album we just did six or seven and took the best two and uh the two that were most coherent and put them on the album and um fantastic they, well yeah they so let's play a little bit of, a, uh, yeah. of this track yeah. now. So this is live at the Baked Potato. It's recorded in February 2019, so just last yeah. year. And the album's just come out um, last month, or July this year. And uh, this features uh, Theo Travis, uh, John Etheridge, my guest on guitar, Roy Babington on bass, and John Marshall on the drums. And we're going to see some pictures as well. There's a little slideshow yeah. that, that um, John has kindly uh, uh, provided some some a range of pictures. So here we go. This is uh, Soft Machine. I just realised I've played the wrong one. Sorry, John. So here we go. <laughs> Crikey. This is going so well. I had this all set up. So this is, <laughs> that was the video. So now we're going to hear a bit of this, uh, the latest album. Here we go, Live at the Baked Potato. <laughs>
Yeah, we got there. Fantastic. That was a soft machine um, live at the baked potato. It's out now. It's the uh, latest album recorded live uh, in February last year. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's, it's just quite incredible. Um, we were just talk, talking briefly about this sense of how music uh, then, like in the 70s and, and back then, we had, you know, the whole attitude that people had to music about you like this or you like that and, and, the, and, the, and the, you know, the different scenes and, and never the twain shall, shall meet, you know, mods well, and rockers, City and United. And, and from the point of view of the, of the, of the audiences to a certain extent... Um, so, I, and I, I mean, I just think that makes what you did even that more remarkable that you were that you well, were playing. Only did it because I was asked. After. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would have carried on with that soft machine thing, and then I was out yeah. of the blue. I was asked to join, which was ridiculous because what happened was, um, soft machine were on. Um, it's another kind of vintage clip, Newcastle Jazz Festival seventy six. Right. End of 76, October 76. We were on that, and um, it was introduced by Spike Milligan, actually, who said, uh, <laughs> machine, soft machine. A friend of mine said, I can't wait to see this band, so he left. Soft machine. <laughs> they filled the Albert Hall. They left a tap running in the dressing room. <laughs> <laughs> that was his introduction. Anyway, we, um, uh, it was on telly, and of course, there again, television appearances were very rare. It was on BBC yeah. Two, and yeah. um, right. Peter Shade, the vibraphone player, bless him, uh, ran into Diz Disley, and Diz Disley said, "I'm looking for a, a new guitar player." And he said, "Well, I saw this bloke last night." And luckily, he didn't say completely the wrong genre. He just said, "I just saw this guitarist last night. I thought it was pretty good. Maybe you should give him a call." So Diz right. Disley called him out of the blue, and I went, "What? Why are you calling me?" And, and when, uh, and when, well, would, when was this, John? Sorry to interrupt. Uh, December 76. Right. And he called me out of the blue. And then, um, you know, he came round. And I, I don't want to, actually, as we've got <coughs> these other things to talk about, I'm not because I've told this story so many times and people probably heard it. But anyway, he came round out of the blue. And, and the upshot was I started playing with Stefan Grappelli and did a world tour, a three-month world tour, which was meant to be just a sort of, holiday before going back to the soft machine but the soft machine meantime sort of well we did some other things but it, it wasn't yeah. doing so much and um so i carried on with stefan you know and uh really it's like it i didn't seek this out it happened <laughs> and i'm really glad it did because it was uh, fantastic i mean the first year or two with stefan grappelli was an absolute highlight for me because the music making was so easy and joyful and it wasn't head banging and it wasn't erotic. Right. It was just, just so easy going and so much fun all around the world. And and he know. was re enjoying quite a resurgence at this point, hadn't he? Because he yes. had that, he had that whole stint at the, uh, what was it? The Hilton in Paris where he was playing with a, like a lounge kind of gig. And it yes. was this Disney lounge. that kind of pulled him out yeah. of there, doesn't it? And am I right? There was some. There was a Parkinson thing where he did with Yehudi Menuhin, and then they. Yes. And then he decided, helped. and it was Diz that kind of got him back into playing with the that guitars was. again, the hot club stuff. <coughs> and so he was, so he was kind of riding another wave at this point, which was very, very good yeah, timing and, and again. Uh, it was, yeah, it was Diz that Diz all, 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 all uh, praised the Diz for kind of doing it for talk because Stefan actually preferred to play with the piano players. But once he started playing the guitars, yeah. the promoter said, well, you've got to stick with the guitars because yeah. this is what sells. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, he was happy to go along with that and he was quite happy. And it was it was the sort of Django thing that people wanted, that association again. Yeah. And one of the few groups I've been with where it actually, particularly in America, it got it built. It got bigger and bigger and bigger while I was in it and it carried on getting bigger. He, he They just loved him. You know, they loved yeah. this old Frenchman, yeah. Playing marble wing violin and the Django thing and yeah, the history <laughs> and the romance of it as well, which yeah. is part of the whole music, isn't it? The romance oh. of the music. Got yeah. to have the romance, you know. Yeah. yeah, you know. And of course, he was actually. Um, I thought he was unbelievably old, but he's he was younger than I am now. <laughs> I thought, and I was incredible that he could still play. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and what a funny old man he is! So there you are. Oh, the wheel turns. 
so we've got a, there is a there is a, a video now we're going to play please, a, a, yes, please, a, of, please. of you um so this was this is the 70th birthday celebrations of at the, us, albert, hall, yeah. at the albert hall with stefan grappelli and so this yeah. was in this would have been 1978 it's, so it's december 78 yes so you've done a couple years at this point with him, and uh, this features Diz Disley on the guitar and and Brian Torf on the bass as well. Is that Saint Louis Blues you're playing? The Saint Louis Blues, yeah, and oh, features yeah. a very fine guitar solo from you. So, Thank you. I mean, I, I mean, I think people just got again remember what you've just been listening to, and yeah. then and and then and then think of this. This is happening kind of around the same time, isn't it? And these things yes, were sir. these projects were running concurrently, yes, which is were, again, I, I just think it's quite staggering so here we go um stefan gopelli's 70th birthday live at the albert hall with uh, john etheridge Thank you. 
Wonderful, wonderful stuff there. And uh, that was my guest, John Etheridge, uh, playing at the Albert Hall with uh, the fantastic, wonderful Stefan Grappelli. And I, I was just, we were just talking about, I love that little look he gave you after your <laughs> solo. <laughs> yeah. he had a little twinkle in his eye like, you rascal. <laughs> and the other thing is everybody's going to be pressing their chat room buzzers and saying, he doesn't look like that anymore. Oh. That wasn't 1978. 1978. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, uh, yes. That's thanks for bringing that up. We do have the chat, so if ladies and gentlemen, if you want to ask any questions, please, please enter the chat, and um, and I'll put those questions to John. I'm monitoring the chat box here, so do let us know what you think if you're enjoying the music, um, and of course, um, you, so you 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 continue to play this music uh, and new music in this style um, with the great Christian Garrick now, and you have yeah, this yeah. this wonderful group. Um, yep. This quartet um, continuing this this same genre, and uh, we've got an album here uh, f from um, I think this is two thousand and nine, and the yeah, album is Small Hotel, and this features oh, yeah. Chris Garrick on the violin. Who you've I mean you've had a long relationship with Chris, haven't you, for for quite some years? It's, it's... I've known him since he was eight. <laughs> wow, yeah. 
because of course Chris I mean people may not know that Chris's father uh, the, 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 the great Michael Garrick is a very uh, well known um, uh, musician composer piano player and uh, the whole family of musicians Gabriel as well on the trumpet so yeah there's a long standing relationship there and you have this wonderful group with um, Chris and Dave Kelby on the guitar and Malcolm Crease on the bass and that yeah, Andy Crowdy on the bass on this Andy track. Crowdy on this on this album sorry so um but that that group's been going going for a while, and so well, I formed it. I formed it when Stefan Grappelli died, and I went to Paris and I sat with him. Which is the first time I've ever sat with you know somebody when they've gone, mm. and uh, and I felt very moved. And I was I just wanted to kind of remember that whole great period, which was a great period of my life. So I formed this band uh, to play a few concerts, sort of remembering him, and then mm. it sort of kind of took off and. Mm. Everybody was keen. A lot of people were keen to, to to hear it, and we so we carried on. And we we don't do a lot now, but we've carried on. For the first few years, we did lots of lots of mm. concerts. And, uh, it worked very well. I used to tell stories about him, you know, and speak mm. in my French accent, you know. Hello, baby. <laughs> He's a very nice guy. I like the way he plays. Bastel, <laughs> nice man. Hello. <laughs> very good. But very good. Just, yeah, made me think of all that. So just, oh. you know, play this track, There's a Small Hotel. There's and, a and small hotel. I rearranged it with funny chords. So don't get annoyed, chat room people, about the chords <laughs> because they're funny funny chords deliberately. They're not a mistake, okay? <laughs> And uh, um, and you may notice now, folks, we've got... Um, so if you are enjoying the music, please consider making a donation. All the tips that we get will be split... Me, uh, I'll be splitting with John. <laughs> He's laughing. Uh, so we have two options now. You can pay on a PayPal one-off, or I have a new Patreon uh, system where you can give a regular donation. There's a little ad just after that. And if you if you join my Gold Level membership on Patreon, you'll get a, uh, a playlist with all the albums of the music you've been listening to. So so we'll just listen to a little bit of this now, which is um, uh, There's a Small Hotel.
hope you're enjoying the show. I just want to take a moment to tell you about um, a new way that you can help support me do this. And that is through Patreon.com. That's right, I've got a, an account now. So the link's below here, Patreon.com Buster Birch. And if you go along to there, um, you can now make donations by Visa credit card. So you don't have to use PayPal if you don't want to do that. And the advantage of Patreon is that once you do it once, it will automatically deduct on a per show basis. So instead of having to fill in the forms every week, if you want to make a regular donation, then that will just automatically deduct straight to your credit card each per show. And that is hugely helpful to me because it means I know that I've got a certain amount coming in every time I do a show. And that really helps me uh, plan ahead and keeps the viable sustainability of the show going there's two levels of sponsorship there's my silver and gold membership all of my patron supporters will get a big thank you personally from me live on the show and the gold uh, member sponsors will get an additional uh, spotify playlist which uh, will be sent to you each week it's something that I'm putting together. It's personally curated by me and will feature lots more albums by the by the guest artists each week. So it's a great opportunity to get to know this music much better. If you're if you're really enjoying the show and you like the little uh, tasters that you're hearing, that's a great way to get to know this music even more and enjoy uh, in full comfort the full sound of the full albums. Thanks very much. Back to the show. Thank you there. That was uh, my little ad for Patreon. And um, so that album we just played was um, Small Hotel. And the name of that group, the quartet there, um, uh, was is called Sweet Chorus. So the name of the band, the, qu the quartet, is Sweet Chorus with uh, Chris Garrick and featuring John Etheridge. And, um, and now we're going to play some other music, some very different music. Um, and uh, you, uh, it was, you said it was around about 2001 you, you started working with... The, the the very famous classical guitarist John Williams who um, who we just uh, who, who who won a Grammy in nineteen seventy three and and who you who you were telling me he was you recently found out it was an OBE and he hadn't told anyone so I think that probably says a lot about about him which yeah, is yeah, yeah. secret OBE John, secret yeah. OBE yeah wonderful yeah well, um, there was another there was another thing like the Disney thing I mean uh, John lives in Hampstead so I used to see him. Right. Um, roundabout and then he just phoned me up out of the blue and said I'm putting something together you know are you interested and I went well yeah and I went round to see him and he and I thought does he want me to, he doesn't want me to play classical guitar duet stuff here or something like that because <laughs> he's totally out of question. but he, he had a good handle on what I what I was into you know so um it started off with a group with Chris Lawrence Paul Clarvis myself and Richard Harvey right which and have called itself the Magic Box after the album, which was John's album called the Magic Box in Sony. And then gradually it ended up as just me and him. I, I killed off the rest of them. <laughs> <laughs> it was the old toy. Like, yeah, it was Kind Hearts and Torrent. <laughs> kind Hearts kind and Torrent. Yeah. I Music love that stuff. film. <laughs> yeah. Music Brilliant. Stuff. Yeah. And uh, they ended up with the two of us. And, and so in 2006, we made this... Um, uh, record uh, um, in live in Dublin. Uh, it's called Places Between, and um, we toured really as a duo between 2006 and 2013, uh, quite continuously actually. And we did yeah. we, we went all over the world, and um, it was um, well we, we you know we worked very hard to get a sort of so that we I mean, bring out the best of both of us, you know. But again, you're I mean this is an entirely different scene genre. Yeah. It way is. of playing and again i mean yeah. without you know without getting yeah. too technical you're, you're playing another totally different guitar again right with it with um, all the well, funny enough on, on the clip you're going to play i'm playing the same guitar actually funny enough that's on the small hotel but but what's different is the approach i mean that is yeah. very very i mean we started off and uh, a fantastic player called ben verdery great composer and guitarist wrote us a contemporary piece and he right. sent us music now I spent so long trying to decipher that music because there was no audio, no CD, right. just the score. Now and you got John, to play the part. This is what people got to realize. Yeah, you so got to play the part, and it you was got a very one of those learn and play the part. Yeah, you know, you very can, challenging you music. Sounds yeah. like you're improvising, but you're not. You know, <laughs> and um, terrifying, terrifying because and I was trying to. 
because there was no audio with it and I was trying to, John, of course, just read his part straight off. But <laughs> I was trying to work out how it sounded, while trying to get yeah. it into my head. It took me ages, you know, ages. Well, that's ages. challenging because you're not hearing the other part, are you, when you're practicing as well? If you haven't got a recording to work off. I wasn't hearing the other part and I was, I was um, it's not so much the reading. I could read no, it all right. Yeah. It's like getting something into my head and the yeah. concept that it sounds like a, I could like a kind of um, free improvisation, but it's actually totally written, you know. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and, I had wow. to and it's got to be the same every night. Yeah, and we had to record it live when we'd never really played it before. And it was, it was, it was quite, um, you know, that was very challenging for me. And it's a, it's a very much a cultural thing that, <clears throat> that you know, you, the people actually coming from, you know, John and I coming from very different directions towards a piece of music. But... Uh, you know, we worked out a really good system and it, it worked really well. And well, um, it certainly does. Yeah. People, people were impressed because they said, oh, we thought it would just be John playing arpeggios and you noodling over the top. And it wasn't <laughs> like that at all. We had, no, it certainly we isn't. No. Really proper tunes. So this one, Ludwig's Horse, that you're going to play, yeah. was written by Paul Hart. Right. And uh, <clears throat> that was the follow up piece to Ben Verdery's piece. So we played Ben right. Verdery's piece for a number of years. And then we played this piece by Paul Hart, which was so based were- on a. Sorry, sorry. It's based, based on something by Beethoven. That's why it's called Ludwig's Horse. But the the material you're generally playing was was commissions and things that you were getting. People were um, writing for you, or of, you were playing some existing repertoire as well. Yes, I had some of my tunes. He had some of his tunes, and there was um, a lot of quite a lot of African influenced stuff, which right. was which is where we came in with the original band with Paul Clavis and Chris right. Lawson was playing. Uh, kind of uh, arrangements of, of African themes, a lot of them by a, a man called Francis Bebe, who was a Cameroonian musician, le- wrote a lot of beautiful music for the guitar. So we did some of those, and we did, I had a, two or three of my tunes that we used. In fact, the, the album's called Places Between, that was one of my tunes. John wrote a few tunes. He wrote a particularly good one called Extra Time, which was like started off with <clears throat> about five minutes of bark, played with the two of us, interlocking with various parts then it went into a sort of ballady section then there was a bit where i was looping and doing a kind of thing with lots of looping and that actually when that came off it used to fall apart sometimes but when it came (laughs) off which luckily it did on the record (coughs) it was actually (coughs) very very effective and uh, brought the house down you know john john knows how to be dramatic as well as being yeah, yeah exactly yeah. Well, I mean, again, you know, this, I, I, I'm not sure people completely comprehend the, the level of which we're t- dealing with playing such completely different music and, the, and yeah. that approach to music. Again, this thing I keep coming yeah. back to, like, such an entirely different from, from yeah. the moment the phone, you get the phone call to the moment yeah. you get on the stage. The entire process is different, isn't it? And oh, very, 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 yeah, very, very different. Um, I mean, I played with Nigel Kennedy a lot, but Nigel would come into our area. Nigel yes. would like to play jazz. and then That's what he was doing. Yeah, he was trying to get away <laughs> and come to you. Yeah, yeah I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So but you're going John to John. Does yeah. what he does. And, and um, you know, he, obviously he's a great musician, so he's flexible, yeah. but he he doesn't improvise. He says he doesn't. He actually does a bit, but he does. He says, I don't improvise. And, you know, so <laughs> we worked out a very good thing i mean it, it took a bit of time it wasn't like two jazz guitarists getting together no, and just turn up and just it. whoa yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know we, we we work really hard you know yeah getting... well it sounds um, like it yeah well this let's um so we've got a bit of video now from yeah. a live concert of yeah. um ludwig's horse what was the can you remember when this was roughly yes that would have been about 29 2010 something like that fantastic okay so this is uh john etheridge and John Williams live in concert. Here we go.
Wonderful. And that was uh, my guest, John Etheridge, playing with um, uh, 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 John Williams on guitar. And that was Ludwig's Horse and um, demonstrating another another uh, incredible, uh, uh, amazing musical feat of playing so many different genres. And um, we've been talking in, in, while the record's on about, um, you know, again, this, this idea of, of approaching music in, in such a different way and 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 and, and I think it boils down to giving yourself to the music I think John I think if you if without yes, putting I, words in your mouth you know I think yeah, like that's think, something you really that comes across when you play yeah I, I yeah I don't, I, it's not conscious and I don't even know if it's even even um, uh, a good thing certainly in jazz people like somebody to sound exactly the same I mean take mm. Stefan Grappelli for instance he sounded more or less like himself Exactly right. the same all the way through. And he used to say to me things like, "Ah, oh, Lloyd, when you do that, that thing you do, I really like it, baby. I can't change because I'm the way I am, you know. Mm-hmm. So he he appreciated people yes. doing different things, but yes. he himself always sound the same. And, and a lot of the great people who are really um, appreciated in jazz pretty well sound the same all the way through their lives. But I just... That's just not me. I mean, I'd yeah. be quite happy if I was like that, but I'm not, you know. <laughs> and it, it's great because I do all these things, which, yeah. and it's because they come up. I mean, I don't seek them out. Um, you know, they, the, they come up. The fact, and it's you, great. the fact you're doing them all concurrently as well, I do think that is yeah. quite unique. You know, that is quite remarkable. Yeah. And, um, yeah. Sometimes I think, like with music, people, you, you know, analogy would be, oh, it's like learning different languages, you know, playing all these different styles. But what you're doing is like, it's like being a British Airways pilot and a German heart surgeon and a Russian nuclear physicist. You know, I mean, Lisa knows any one of those things is no small feat. You know, it's not just, you know, being ordering yeah, like dinner that. in a in a different language. Good. I like that, Buster. That's good. That's it's good. quite something. It really is. Um, so, uh, we, well, I mean, the time has really marched on, well, and uh, I'm I'm sorry, folks, if we've if we've you know we we it, it is what it is, and uh, it's my show, and I can do whatever I like. So. <laughs> We haven't got to go to the news. It's not the BBC, but we are going to wrap up soon. We've got um, yep. we've got one more track here. Another band, another another sort of. I guess this is a bit, little bit more straight ahead jazz. Um, this is the Trio North, which is a oh. long collaboration you've had with the bass player Ben Crossland, um, who we've we've this and and this is the connection here a little bit where because uh, Ben has this other band where he does the uh, Ray Davies tribute mm-hmm. thing, doesn't he? Which yep, we, yep. which, which I was fortunate enough to dep in and play with you in that yep. group. And yes, that was, that did. was a lot of fun. And, um, yep. and one yep. of the things Ben likes to do, I'm, now I'm not, I've never, I'm not sure about the trio. Like, is it the, the, the repertoire? Is it a Ben, does Ben select the repertoire? Is it a more of a collaborative oh, no, no. thing with it you or? Started off as, but it essentially is it's three or four gigs we used to do and we still do basically up north every year so um and i always uh, enjoyed it because it's one of those things where i've got bass and drums yeah. and they basically do what i want you see there again that's that's the balance i like between being in charge and not being in charge being yeah. a side man being a member of the band being in charge. I like to have a balance in all of them. And this one is basically, mm. I say, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, we're going to do that, we're going to do that. So you select uh, the repertoire then, because this is what totally, I was going to come totally, to. Totally. Yeah. I'm responsible for this, ah, totally. Same thing with inter- Sweet Chorus. But then Sweet Chorus, because Chris Garrick's so brilliant, it's more of a cooperation. But yeah. this one is just me. And and um, and Ben is very happy, because Ben usually is the band leader, so he's quite happy to play the bass and and so not deal with that stuff, that's part totally totally really totally mine and uh i just particularly like this version of will you still love me well, tomorrow also it... i feel unpressured by uh them uh you you know you talk about this being appropriate and moving and and i do and i that's what i do but fun enough in this particular trio it's more or less me saying this is how it's going to be. <laughs> and, well, I just think it's interesting because that thing that the, the the project that Ben has is where he takes the pop songs and yeah, then does like a jazz version. So that, I, that's what I'm a side man in that, and that's very relaxing for me because I turn up with my guitar. I don't even have to smile. You know, <laughs> it's quite. It's. I tell you what. No, no, I do smile, but I don't you have do to. Smile. 
Yeah. If you're the band leader, you've got to smile. You've yeah, got yeah. To... Yeah. So I really enjoy it. It's one of the gigs I, I like doing with Ben's Ray Davis band because I love the material. Well, this and is get... my point. Yeah, this this repertoire thing. Because what you've done here is you've taken, <laughs> you know, this this classic, um, this old, you know, hit, hit, Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow, which was the Shirelles. Yeah, I love the, the Shirelles, you know. And it's Carol that... King. Carol King, of yeah. course, Rory. Right? Yeah, yeah, with Jerry Goffin and um, uh, that partnership. And um, But this is like... This is in so many movies and everything. But what you've done is you've 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 done something new with it, haven't you? And I think this is the yeah, great like, thing when well, I like, jazz just musicians like this rendez- do that. You yeah. Know. Why I chose it is because I, I I I just like the way this turned out. It's one of the few things where I listen to it and I go pretty well almost to the end. That's exactly how I wanted it to be. <laughs> it's very tasteful, yeah, and a very tasteful bit of drumming from Dave Tyre. Dave, lovely. Just Dave sits on the cymbals, doesn't oh, he, with the brushes? Yeah. That. He came up with that symbol thing, you know, right. and, and yeah. really well. So this is Trio North and uh, a, a cover of the Shirelles famous tune, Will You Still Love Me Tomorrow, featuring John Etheridge on the guitar.
Wonderful, wonderful, and absolutely beautiful playing there. What a what a beautiful rendition of that of that classic tune. And uh, and you. well, I, I you know, Father Time has caught us up. Well, and, uh, we've we've actually gone over a bit, but there we go. That's jazz. <laughs> I like to give them their give them their money's worth on the first show. There we go. Yeah, so, absolutely. Speaking of which, ladies and gentlemen, if you have enjoyed the show, do do think about giving us a tip. It, it goes a long way. We've got some PayPal and my new Patreon support system. <laughs> John it's loves it. Worth the tips. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. As I like to say, it's, it's not the principle, it's the money that counts. Yeah. <laughs> So um, <laughs> we've just about reached the end of the show now, folks, and um, I, it's just been great. I, I re I've just could sit and talk to you all night, John, and it's oh, it's such a pleasure to have you on the yeah. show and sharing your music and with us. And and you know, I could, I mean, there's so much we can all learn from you and from your approach to music and plan your attitude to to music and. It's, it, and again, I, I mean, I know you're very modest, and but it really is quite remarkable that what you've achieved and shown is possible because I don't think there's anyone doing what you've done and, and to continue to do. And right. Well, man, that's, that's very nice of you to say that. I appreciate it. I, I and, mean, uh, it's astonishing. 50 years, actually. In fact, wow. it's 50 years this September Crikey. that I started. In the business, not started playing, but I started professional. Yeah. Yeah. September 1970. Oh, so there you go. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. We have to get Brown a cake. A been cake. Covered. <laughs> Ground has been covered. Water <laughs> has flown under the bridge. Oh, <laughs> and there's plenty more to go. And uh, Yeah, hope so. <laughs> so so um yeah, well I hope the tours get back on for next year. I'm sorry you had to get you know, yeah. that soft machine thing happened, but I'm sure there'll yeah. be plenty more next year and it'll all come back with a vengeance i think we're going to all be very very busy next year and everyone will be like desperate to see some live music again and they'll yes, be, suddenly they it'll all be loads of, we'll all be double booked we won't be yeah, able to I'll, do them all <laughs> yeah we will yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we then we'll have something to moan about as well won't we <laughs> exactly oh, time, mate. Oh, up, driving up down the country <laughs> So um, so do check out John's um, website, ladies and gentlemen. The link is in is below on on the YouTube uh, info uh, box there. So um, and you can see much more about all his projects, his albums. You can you've got there's a shop there to purchase some um, stuff. I know the new the new um, Soft Machine album is on there. Yep. Um, yeah, on and there. if you join my gold Patreon uh, subscription, you'll get the Spotify playlist as well with all the further listening. So that just leads me to say a massive thank you to John Etheridge and and uh, all of you for tuning in and uh, checking out my new show. And thank you, John, for coming and thank you, Buster. The thank evening. you very much. It's been great. Thanks, it's been a lot of fun. What yeah, we're going to yeah. do is I'm going to play out now with uh, a bit of live video, a video of a live performance um, of John. Uh, for, this is from um, Seven Arts in Leeds, which it leads, which is uh, a jazz club, um, and this is from April 2013. And this is this is a solo performance, so using loop pedals, um, and this is uh, an African kind of uh, style. Oh, yeah piece that you play what's the i didn't get the name it's of this called mm sanduza by abdullah ibrahim oh wow fantastic so well thank you again john it's been absolutely wonderful and uh, i'm going to play out now with this with this video thanks everybody um do check thank the uh, website for the uh, upcoming guests we've got um next week i've got simon spillett and uh, I'm sure that'll be a great show as well. And then we've got a few more uh, guests booked up already. They're on the website, so do check that out. And don't forget to join the mailing list and you'll get the link sent to you each week, one hour before the show. It's all free. And uh, thanks again for joining us. Thanks, John. Good night, everybody. I'll leave you with this. Thank you.